So it has been brought to my attention that there is another disastrous Clock Tower game. You see, I always thought that it was just Clock Tower 1, 2, and 3, but it turns out that there's another game between 2 and 3. The game was originally called Clock Tower Ghost Head, but when it was localized, it was renamed Clock Tower 2 The Struggle Within. The reason for this is that only Clock Tower 2 was localized, so they renamed that one Clock Tower and just made this one number 2. That's not confusing at all. Anyway, I heard about this game and how it makes Clock Tower 3 look like a masterpiece in comparison, and you know how I feel about that game, so obviously I had to check it out. 1 and 2 are pretty beloved, 3 is just weird, but this one, People hate this game, and I had to know why. Clock Tower 2, The Struggle Within, is about a girl named Alyssa. Which is confusing, because the protagonist of Clock Tower 3 is also named Alyssa. But they're two separate people. They for some reason named their protagonist Alyssa two games in a row. Anyway, this Alyssa is special, because she's basically being possessed by a cruel ghost man named Bates. So she switches between the two throughout the game. The gameplay is point and click like the Clock Tower games before it, but the rest of it is a disaster. There is no way to figure out what you're supposed to do in this game. You just run around and click on everything in sight in hopes that something will progress the story. Locked doors will randomly unlock just because you found an object on the opposite side of the house. And there's no way to know that this door is unlocked now. You just have to examine literally everything again after you make a bit of progress. This game is incredibly tedious. But we'll get into that more as we move on, so let's get into the story. So the game starts with Alyssa traveling to visit her Uncle Philip and Aunt Catherine. We then cut to said aunt and uncle sitting around a table. Catherine seems worried about something and Philip is comforting her. They hear a noise and Catherine goes to see if it's their daughter, Ashley. When she leaves, Philip mumbles to himself about someone named Alan Hale and the Maxwell Curse. We suddenly hear Catherine scream, and we now jump to what is likely several hours later, when Alyssa arrives at the house. She quickly realizes that no one is there, so she starts to look around the house. She finds a bunch of body parts and strange yellow blood all throughout the house. Now I joked in my Clock Tower 3 video that Alyssa didn't have much of a reaction to strange things that happen. Well this Alyssa takes it to a whole new level. What? How? It's only an arm? Okay, if there was a severed arm wiggling around on my table, I can promise you I would have a way more animated reaction than that. But Alyssa has this weird sort of lack of reaction to everything. What? The piano. Speaking of weird reactions, you can investigate the samurai armor in the hallway and Alyssa will just go, Ooh, spooky. And I don't know, it's just a little weird to me that Alyssa is finding body parts and blood all around her family's home, and she still is just wandering around casually, looking at their suit of armor, and going, ooh, spooky. Eventually, she finds her cousin Ashley's severed head, and the shock awakens Bates for the first time. Now you can switch between Alyssa and Bates throughout the whole game, and you do this with an amulet. When Alyssa has it, Bates is kept under control. Without it, he'll take over when Alyssa is shocked or attacked. Bates can do all sorts of things that Alyssa wouldn't normally do, like kick children or use a gun. Okay, there's only one good thing about this game, and it is Bates. He has this deep, cruel, scary sounding voice when he's in control of Alyssa, and it is just so funny to hear it coming out of this little girl. The little twerp. I'll kill her. It really is so entertaining when he takes over and he's just cussing and being a dick to people. Hey, you little shit. What good is it gonna do to burn that? Now in order to progress through the game, you have to switch between Alyssa and Bates, because there's certain things that only they can do. In order to become Bates, you have to put the amulet down, and he'll come out the next time you get attacked. Just pick the amulet up to switch back to Alyssa. In theory, this is a super cool idea, and I'm sure it would be awesome in a remake. But in this game, it's a hot mess. First, having to be attacked to turn into Bates is just a pain. You're losing health to switch when there aren't many med kits in the first place. Not only that, but there are times where you want to switch to Bates, but there aren't any enemies around, so you're just kind of stuck. Plus, there's never a clear indicator of when you're supposed to switch. You'll investigate the whole area as Alyssa and find nothing. So you switch to Bates and now you have to search the whole area again, clicking on everything in sight, only to find out that you had to check this random table because apparently Alyssa can't do that herself. I'm calm. I'm calm. Okay, back to the game. Alyssa is in control again when a clock suddenly starts to ring. A sword on the wall randomly starts to float and dashes at her. Alyssa ducks, and when she turns around, a little girl is standing there laughing. This is apparently Alyssa's cousin, Stephanie, and she seems to be possessed or something because she starts chasing her with a knife. This little girl is basically the first stalker character of the game, and she'll chase you until you either hide as Alyssa or jack her up as Bates. Eventually, she finds a strange looking statue, and when she touches it, it zaps her. She says that it has some kind of strange power and then moves on. Later on, she enters a room and finds Philip doing something? Is he cleaning? Rummaging? I, I don't know. If you talk to him, you have a pretty normal conversation where he tells Alyssa to hide, but I much prefer talking to him as Bates. Bates tells him that Alyssa is asleep right now. Philip seems troubled by this at first, but then he just goes right back to doing whatever it is he's doing. Alyssa, no, no, 
Impossible! Alyssa's asleep. I'm here instead. Alyssa finds her Aunt Catherine about to be attacked by Stephanie, and Bates Fs her up. Afterwards, Alyssa feels the need to comment on how full their fridge is for some reason. Wow, it's so full. Is that really what's important right now, Alyssa? Then she finds her aunt hiding in a room. She says that the Maxwell curse will kill them all, and refuses to elaborate. Alyssa then finds a letter from her father, Alan Hale, that says he sent them the statue. It belongs to the Maxwell family, and probably has nothing to do with the curse. She assumes that he's talking about the statue she found earlier, but- <gasps> It's gone! She runs into Philip in the hallway, and he tells her to hide in the den. She goes, and Philip is there holding the statue. He says that everything is the fault of the Maxwell curse. It all started when Stephanie found the statue in the closet, and the curse is the reason Alyssa is possessed. Then he all of a sudden starts to strangle her, but she pushes him off and runs. But then you find him in the very next room, passed out on the floor. Uh, uh, bro, what happened? He tells you to burn the statue and passes out. Burn it! The statue! Burn it! If you knew the statue needed to be burned, why didn't you just do that yourself instead of taking it to the den and then strangling Alyssa? Moving on, Alyssa burns the statue while Stephanie tries to attack her. Bates gets fed up during this, though. <laughs> oh! That's the way I do it. Why is Bates kind of a mood? Alyssa sets the statue on fire, this weird yellow face comes out of Stephanie, and they both pass out. Alyssa wakes up in a hospital and a police officer named Alex is there. He said that he got a call from Catherine and brought Alyssa and Stephanie to the hospital. Apparently Stephanie was badly injured, but she won't die. Which I am shocked to hear after Bates stabbed her in the heart. They suddenly hear a scream and Alex runs off to investigate, leaving Alyssa defenseless and alone. Alyssa leaves too and oh my god there's zombies in this game. So the zombies are responsible for possibly the worst game mechanic ever. The only way for Alyssa to kill the zombies is to go to this room, grab a broom, and beat them over the head with it. You can't really get around the zombies, and once they find you, they will not stop chasing you. So no matter where you are in the hospital, you have no choice but to run all the way back to this room and hit them with the broom. Alyssa, why don't you just take the broom with you at this point? Now you may be thinking, Oh, why don't you just turn into Bates so you can shoot them? I mean, that's kind of his thing, he can use a gun. Well, you see, there's only about four bullets in the gun, and there's way more than four zombies, so that doesn't really help. You are stuck in broom hell. <laughs> Alyssa runs into a news reporter named Doug. He says that there's a big story here and walks off. He did leave behind the file he was looking at, though, and it's about someone named George Maxwell. As Alyssa investigates the hospital, she'll randomly hear a woman's voice calling out to her and taunting her. Are you trying to escape? <gasps> she also finds this dead zombie nurse, and when it attacks her, she reacts in typical Alyssa fashion. What's happening here? Alex shows up again, and he says that he thinks Philip is behind all of this, and suggests checking out the research facility next door because he's the boss there. He's got nothing to say about all the zombies, though. Then Bates threatens a nurse for information. If you're not gonna talk, then I'll kill you. There's a file in my office. You'll find your answer in there. Bates goes into this room, and there's this weirdo in there who I'm guessing is a doctor. All we know is that his name is apparently Kaplan, based on his text box. He keeps laughing to himself and threatens Bates with his weird, high-pitched voice. Those creatures can eat you instead of me. And while they're chewing on you, I can't escape. Bates takes him down, though, of course. Pretty good for a coward. <laughs> They'll eat you up! And then the rest of the time you're in this room, you have to listen to him laugh to himself while he shakes on the floor. <laughs> Bates makes it to the office the nurse mentioned, and finds a file talking about cerebral toxin, and if you're infected by it, you'll turn into a zombie. Alyssa's in control again, and she happens upon the nurse from earlier, trying to hang herself. And I am really unsure if Alyssa is able to convince her to stop or not. No, don't, please! Yet yeah, you never see this nurse again, so I have no clue what happens to her. Alyssa goes to the room with Kaplan again, and the same exact scene plays out from before. The only difference is Alyssa can't push him off like Bates can. That's when the door opens and Kaplan is shot. Alyssa rushes outside to see who saved her when she hears the woman's voice again. You know, the one she's randomly been hearing all throughout the hospital. Except this time we actually get to see her. I can't forgive you. Who are you? I... I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. The woman says that she can't forgive Alyssa, and the only reason she rescued her is because she can't let her die so easily, and then she walks away. Alyssa runs into Doug the reporter again, and he says that he's going to the research lab next door because there's a secret there. Alex and Alyssa try to leave, but a bunch of zombies start pouring through the door. Alyssa passes out for some reason, and then you have to play through a really tedious section where you have to shoot all the zombies as Alex, and if even one of them touches you, you die. 
Alyssa wakes up in the research facility next door. Alex says he brought her here because he saw Philip go inside and he can't ignore it. Alyssa tells him that's really not suspicious because he's the laboratory director, but Alex is like, yeah, whatever, and leaves. Alex is an awful police officer. First of all, instead of taking her somewhere safe, he brings her to where the danger is at the research facility. And then he just leaves her there all by herself. Okay, so the research facility is the final section of the game. It's also the worst section of the game. This section is huge. Why is this a bad thing? Well, remember the broom from the hospital section that was the only way to kill zombies? In the research facility, instead of a broom, there's this fire extinguisher. And like I said, this area is much bigger than the last. Most of your time in this section of the game is going to be spent backtracking to this fire extinguisher. You'll be making some good progress and oh crap, a zombie. <laughs> Okay, back to what I was doing. I just need to go through this door and... No! Ugh. This section of the game is also responsible for an extremely infamous bad ending. You'll reach a point where the only door you can go through is this one. There's some blood on the ground and when you look at it, this happens. <laughs> Everyone must die. Yes, yes you did just get killed by samurai armor falling from the ceiling. Now how do you prevent this bad ending? Remember the samurai armor from the very beginning of the game? Every time you look at it, Alyssa just goes, ooh, spooky. But after you find a very specific key item, if you inspect the armor again, it will come to life and chase you around. This sounds like a bad thing, but apparently not. This is the only way to prevent the bad ending. It's so stupid though. Alyssa says the same thing every time you look at this armor. So why would you ever think to check it again after finding a completely unrelated item? Oh yeah, and since this is something that happens so early on, if you get this bad ending, you have to start the whole game over. This is just evil. This is so easily missable, and the game just lets you play the whole way through to the final section without giving you any indicator that you're doomed. Anyway, Alyssa finds Doug the reporter again. He tells her that he saw a bloody man with a hatchet, so watch out. Oh, hey, there he is. Now this is the main villain of both this section and the game. Ghost head except the text box immediately gives away who he really is. Later, Alyssa finds the woman again, who says that her name is Shannon. Shannon asks her if she came here to die and tells her to run off so she can have some fun with her for a bit. Hey, there's Alex. Any useful information, officer? Yeah, this is some kind of place, isn't it? Creature that bleeds yellow blood, hatchet-wielding killer. You better get out of here quick. Why am I even surprised at this point? Alyssa is Bates right now though, so I wonder how he'll respond to that. I don't remember you telling me what to do. And you might be? I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Ghosthead shows up again and tells Alyssa that she wasn't supposed to be born. Ugh. Alyssa finds her father, Alan Hale, handcuffed to a pipe and frees him. They head to the lab director's office and her dad opens a door with what I think is a retina scan? Ghosthead comes out of the door and her dad pushes Alyssa into the room, saying that he's just going to talk with him. Philip is there and he says that he discovered the truth behind the Maxwell curse. Oh, awesome, tell me about, oh, okay, bye. Alyssa leaves the room and runs into Shannon again. She says that Alyssa ruined her life and starts to strangle her, but Bates saves the day yet again and Shannon runs off. We then find Philip in a random graveyard and he's hunched over dying. He says that her dad was behind everything and there isn't really a curse. Philip dies and Alyssa is really broken up about it. Uncle Philip, no. Bates finds Alyssa's dad, and he seems to actually know who Bates is. Bates tells him that he thinks he's so sly using the Maxwell curse, but her dad is like, whatever, everything will be over soon. You want to see the conclusion, right? Alyssa is back in control, and she runs into Shannon again. She says that she's going to kill her, but Alyssa's dad shows up and tells her to stop. Shannon is like, you abandoned me when I was a little girl. Her dad says to kill him instead, because there's no point in taking revenge on Alyssa. Shannon claims there's a better way, and takes some pills and dies. Alyssa's dad then reveals that Shannon was his daughter, and then walks away. Why does everyone walk away? instead of explaining things in this game. Doug the reporter shows up again and he's basically like, I have no idea what's going on here. Bye. What a beautiful arc this character had. She finds Alex again, who suggests that they should escape, but she says that she can't leave things like this. She finds her dad and Ghost Head in a shrine. All Ghost Head can say is everyone must die over and over again. Her dad admits that Alyssa is not actually his daughter, 
but George Maxwell's, aka Ghost Head. He says that he hated Maxwell, so to ruin him, he dug up the Maxwell family grave and took Alyssa, the cursed daughter with an alter ego. Maxwell starts to go for Alyssa, but her dad shoots him. He tells her that he loves her like an actual daughter, so he infected the statue with cerebral toxin to make Maxwell go crazy. If you're confused, so was I. And honestly, I still kind of am. But just hold on, we will explain it all later. Her dad tells her to run because the place is about to blow up. Goodbye, Alyssa. Hurry and leave. This building is going to blow up. How heart-wrenching. He passes out and Ghost Head jumps up again, but Alex shows up and shoots him. We're then shown a flashback of her dad digging up the Maxwell grave and finding a baby Alyssa. He says that the curse is just an old wives' tale before taking her. Back in present time, Alex and Alyssa watch the facility burn down. Alyssa cries and says that this is all her fault. Alex comforts her before going, well, I need to go kill the rest of those zombies. Bye. Well, I guess I've got to get rid of those zombies. It's not gonna be easy. The end. Okay, so I was beyond confused when I finished this, so I got some help from the internet. So apparently in the Maxwell family, there are cursed twins born every few generations. Alyssa was a twin and she had a brother. When they were born, the Maxwell family buried them alive. Alyssa's dad hated George Maxwell, her actual father, so he decided to dig up the twins so the family would be cursed. Her brother was already dead, but Alyssa had survived. Her dad adopted her and loved her as if she were his own. As she grew up though, he was shocked to discover her alter ego, Bates, and got her an amulet to control him. So then there's cerebral toxin. It seems it's a bacteria that her dad created for some reason. He put it on the statue and that made Maxwell go crazy. And finally, Bates. It is theorized and heavily implied that he is the ghost of her twin brother that died and now he's living on inside of Alyssa. Okay, so that kind of helped, but I'm still confused. Why did her dad feel the need to make Maxwell go crazy, especially all of these years later? If the toxin makes you crazy, that explains Maxwell's actions as well as Stephanie's, since it was said she started acting that way after she touched the statue. But what about all the zombies? We learned that cerebral toxin is what made all of them like that. But why are they zombies and not crazy people like Maxwell and Stephanie? What is the difference here? And why did this weird yellow face leave Stephanie's body when the statue was burned? Might as well just knock out all of my other questions right now too. If everything was caused by cerebral toxin, what about all the paranormal stuff? Like the walking samurai armor, the floating sword, the piano that plays itself. What was the point of Doug? Why was he there? What happened to him? And what about Shannon? I'm guessing she hated Alyssa because she was the one that got love from their father, but why was she abandoned in the first place? Why was she just hanging around the hospital and the facility? She just dies, her dad admits she's his daughter, and it's never brought up again. Is there really a curse? Because if not, why are the Maxwells just burying any twins born into their family? Did he discover Alyssa's true identity and then go after her, and that's why her dad made him go crazy to stop him? Because if so, that backfired. And this amulet her dad gave her, why does it control Bates? Does it have magical powers or something? Honestly, I don't even know where the internet got the information that we do know for a fact, because I got none of that from the game. I think there were some comics released that had more information, so maybe that's where? Because if it was in the game, it went over my head. So yeah, in conclusion, don't play this game. You will lose your mind. The only good thing about it is Bates, and even then it's not worth all the suffering. But that is going to do it for me today, guys. If you have other suggestions of games like this, drop them in the comments below. I'm really enjoying going through these. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>